Check out the activities that are listed there, things that you may need to be aware of. In addition to that, this Wednesday night, there will be no Bible study here at the church. So everybody's on their own for their daily Bible study. No corporate Bible study this week. On Saturday, which is November the 25th, uh, there will be a group of people here to decorate the sanctuary for hanging of the greens. If you're interested and capable of helping, you're certainly encouraged to come out and help with that. That will take place at 9 a.m. Any other announcements? Um, continue to remember December 1st is our student ministry movie night. If you have not bought a ticket, I gave my students more tickets this morning. Please see one of our students. Buy some tickets, come watch the movie, come fellowship, come have a good time. We also are going to have um, hot cocoa bombs, if anybody is familiar with those. There. Miss Kelly, you want to talk to us about that real quick? <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, it's chocolate on the inside. It has the um, hot cocoa mix and stuff. And, yes, it's very simple. Um, I I'll let you see what happens with it. Y'all come and buy some, okay? Sugar. Sugar. Um, and Sugar. also, today, for those of you who play volleyball, today will be our last Sunday of the year playing volleyball on Sunday. We will start back in January after today. Thank you, Ms. Courtney. Brother Eugene, yes, sir. Uh, that same night, and, uh, what is it you said you said? Movie night. Movie night. Okay, the choir is supposed to be at uh, Fairmont. That night we've had it booked for about six months ago. Okay. Party singing there, then. So you excuse the part, we're not here. <laughs> we won't be here. Just excuse the part because we'll be down there singing for them. Thank you, Brother Ron. And the choir will practice the third Wednesday night. Either. No choir practice Thursday night. Wednesday night. Wednesday night, I'm sorry. Uh, Ms. Taylor. Thank you, Ms. Taylor. Anyone else? Thank you. Morning. Good morning. <laughs> morning. <laughs> oh, how's everyone doing this morning? Oh, wow, wow. I, we're studying this book called Fresh Wind, Fresh Fire. I, I'll be honest. Pastor, this book is changing my life. <laughs> um, if you have never read this book, I would encourage you to read this book because, you know, I've actually, there's a lot of books that I've read, but this one, like some things I have learned that I never knew before. Did you know that the house of God was to be a house of prayer? That, that prayer should be the main focus of church. That preaching was never meant to be the centerpiece. Like when this author said that, I was like, wow. And I, I've never heard of chain pray, praying before. Have you ever heard of chain pray, praying? Like for years, they were praying nonstop. Like literally, they would have a group of people in a room praying while preaching was happening. The whole time. But I kept looking at this book, and I was like, wow, the power of prayer. Like, he was talking about this one story. He was so deep in prayer that there was this man with a gun that just came through those doors and was pointing the gun right at the pastor. But you know what? He was too deep in prayer. And when he got all the way up to the altar, you know what he did? He threw the gun down and went running. And instead of the altar, uh, the the ushers, like, jumping in and grabbing him. They were like, stop, wait, wait. And he ended up giving his life to the Lord. Could you imagine that? Or, or the time they went down to, like, I guess they called it, like, the salt flats, where there were a whole bunch of male prostitutes. 
Now that is scary. But they would go and witness to them. And the leader of them would act. Actually, they started coming to church. And then all of a sudden, they were no longer dressing up like girls. They were dressing up like men and giving their life to the Lord. Even though that they had AIDS. And, and it was funny because the guy's wife called, right? And, and the pastor was like, you know what? I'm going to give a prayer like, okay, I'm going to see you in heaven. But all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit says, stop. No. Pray for healing. And that church prayed for the healing and he was healed. And he came back and gave his testimony of how his life was transformed. And then eventually he passed away from AIDS. And I'm thinking this whole entire time. Yeah, we do get calls. We get a lot of calls. And I appreciate our pastor. That he's always reminding us to pray throughout the week. But are we truly praying enough? And I think what really stood out in this chapter today was the prayer, prayer for boldness. Do we pray to be bold? So if you open your Bibles to Acts chapter 4, verse 23. Acts chapter 4, verse 23. Acts chapter 4, verse 23. He uses an analogy that there was this team playing in Madison Square Garden. And they were losing like bad, like 27 to 6. And the coach calls this timeout, and all the players come. And now you're thinking, what's the coach going to say? The first player gets there. He's like, can you believe we're playing in Madison Square Garden? The other one goes to the stands and like kisses his girlfriend. And the coach the whole time is saying, He's using this analogy to, to compare the souls that are being won for Jesus. That we're losing this game. Now, we celebrate when we have one person come and give their life to Jesus. And I was thinking, he says something. Often when we think about Peter, we think about how Peter denied Jesus Christ. Now, I like what Jim says in this book. The reason why Peter denied Jesus Christ is because he was missing something. He was missing the Holy Spirit. He was missing the Holy Spirit. But we always think about how Peter denied Jesus. But sometimes we forget. Like when Peter spoke, not just one came to the altar, 3,000. Another time he spoke, 1,000. And we're wondering why we're losing this game. And we're losing this game bad. There's loved ones that you have today that if we would just come to this altar and pray for them with boldness, he says that we need to be rejuvenated with the Spirit. That over time, because of the world, it kind of dissipates. But you know what? Today is a great day. To get a fill up. Amen. To be recharged with that spirit. To be on fire for Christ. See what was happening in, in chapter 4 of Acts, right? Peter, I think Peter and John got arrested. And they said, we'll let you go if you don't say Jesus' name. We will let you go. We don't see, say Jesus' name. Do you think they just say, okay, oh boy, I messed up. We're not going to do this. What should I do? Should I get a lawyer? No. What did they do? They prayed for boldness. Let's read this. It says, and being let go, they went to their own companions and reported all that the chief priests and the elders said to them. So when they heard that, they raised their voice and God with one accord and said, Lord, you are God who had made heaven and earth and the sea and all that is in them, who by the mouth of your servant David has said, 
Why did the nations rage and the people plot vain things? And the kings of the earth took their stand. And the rulers were gathered together against the Lord and against his Christ. For truly against your holy servant Jesus, whom we annoyed by both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel were gathered together to, to do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. To do whatever your hand and your purpose determined before to be done. What is Jesus' purpose? How do we carry that purpose? know where we start? Prayer. Prayer. That's what they did. They went and prayed. What should we pray about today? Do we have any requests for prayer? Uh, Praise reports to give thanks to our Lord? We should remember all the great things that he has done for us, even this week. Sorry. I got a little passionate about this, didn't I? <laughs> Honestly, this book is changing me. I used to come to church. I'll just be honest. I mean, yeah, prayer is all right. Singing, nothing gets you, brother. <laughs> but I wanted to hear the preaching. I think I have changed now. I want to hear the prayer. I want to hear those prayer requests. I want to see that when we pray, he uses an example It's like that labor room that we're just crying out to the Lord. Crying to the Lord. All right, prayer request. I got to stop talking. (laughs) Remember my family prayer? Yes, bro. Let's still remember all the families that are grieving, the services that will be healed today, tomorrow. I'd like for y'all to remember the family of uh, Bobby Dial. Um, he passed yesterday, and his service will be Wednesday. My daughter asked the church to pray for her nephew, Enjoy Clark.
We do want to uh, remember Miss Linda Hunt. Uh, she she is in the hospital in Marburg right now. We do want to keep her in our prayers. We also want to remember uh, Brother Thomas Locklear. He's in the hospital. Hopefully he'll get to come home today and that more throughout the day. But uh, do keep these things in prayer. I like to see you remember them. I've had a lot of problems with my right foot. Uh, I X-ray on me said I had authorized in the bar letter that my good information so y'all be good. We are. Definitely are. Definitely are. Remember my family when we pray. I don't like to be able to, uh, I read you call it praise before. I've been married to the same woman for 40 years. Today. Today is an anniversary. Congratulations. I've been married to her since I've been married to her. Let's gather around the altar. Everyone that wants to come to the altar. And I'm going to ask, when I was reading this chapter, I thought one person. Like, who really prays and calls out the Lord? And the person that came to mind is my brother. My brother. Can you do this prayer for us? I mean, when I listened to him pray and Brother Crafton, oh man, I'm inspired. But everyone, if you need something... Let's just come to the altar. Let's give it to Jesus. Sometimes we say the buck stops here. <laughs> Anyone that needs prayer. Yes, yes.
God, we serve to be able to come before the throne of grace where we might find help and grace in time of need. Isn't he good this morning, church? He's always good, isn't he? How great our God is. I invite you to stand and sing with us about our God. He is real and able to seek and save this morning. Sing with us.
us as we sing. You can sit down if you want to. Praise the Lord. Trust in God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Brother Don, I trust Him today. Praise the Lord with all I have. Praise the Lord. I trust in God. Amen. Thank you, Lord.
goodness of God. Praise the Lord. One of my favorite songs. Worship is living. Please us in this song.
It's good to see each one of you here with us this morning. And we do want to say happy Thanksgiving. Uh, we know that many of you have plans for, uh, for Thursday. We, we hope and pray that all your plans go as you plan them. And the Lord truly and richly blesses you. If you have your Bibles, turn with us to the book of Mark chapter 5. We're going to look in verses 25 through 34. While you're turning there, Brother Brian's going to lead us in a song, and we want you to sing with him. This is the introduction to this message. Just let the lyrics of these, this song really speak to you, but listen and sing with him. Many positions, it grew worse. So to Jesus, she came, and when the crowd tried to
this prisoner finally touched Jesus. He set me free, praise the Lord, free indeed. Touching Jesus is all that God, as we do come before you, we just thank you that touching you is all that matters. We thank you, God, that you've given us the privilege to be able to call upon your name and you will hear us. God, we thank you for what you're doing right now in the midst of this service. And God, if there's one who doesn't know you through your son, Jesus Christ, if there's one today, God, who has yet to surrender their life to you today, God. Allow your Holy Spirit to sit with them and talk with them and help them to see their need for a Savior this day. Oh, God, we need you. We're calling out to you. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, praise him, darling. Yeah. He is so good. He is so good. Yes, he is. He is so good. He is so good. Yes. All right. <laughs> no. Yes. Well, Amen. He's worthy to be praised. <laughs> well, well, well. Do you know that if you leave this world, where you'll be? Oh, if you don't know, you can know today. You can be assured today. Oh, if you don't know, chances are we know. <laughs> but you can be assured today that heaven is your home. You can be assured that heaven is your home. He's worth praising. Isn't he? He is worth praising. <laughs> mm.
The Bible tells us in Mark 5, 25 through 34. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Then she heard about Jesus. And she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. Immediately the fountain of her blood was dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed of the affliction. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that power had gone out from him, turned around in the crowd and said, who touched my clothes? But his disciples said to him, you see the multitude thronging you, and you say, who touched me? And he looked around to see her who had done this thing, but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell down before him and told him the whole truth. And he said to her, daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. This is God's holy word. You may be seated. In today's narrative, we find that it is in the midst of another narrative. The narrative we spoke on last week surrounds this narrative. This narrative is looked at often by many as a hindrance to Jesus trying to get to Jairus home to help his family. However, as it was made clear last week that this was no hindrance at all for Jesus. This didn't keep Jesus from helping Jairus' family. In fact, Jesus stopping and taking time with this certain woman further solidifies his power over death. <laughs> there was a funeral yesterday connected to folks in this church. There'll be a funeral today connected the folks in this church. There'll be two funerals tomorrow connected to folks in this church. In my time as the pastor here, we've had enough funerals that we should understand what the Hebrew writer said when he said, it's appointed once unto men to die, and after this, the judgment. We should also understand the Apostle Paul's words when he said the wages of sin is death. What we should understand is that death, as we know it, it's a reality as long as we're living in this life. But folks, I want to remind us that there's hope. <laughs> The Apostle Paul even shares that while the wages of sin is death, the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. The Hebrew writer shares that as it is appointed once unto men to die, but after this the judgment, as Christ was offered up once to bear the sins of many to those who eagerly await him, we will, he will appear a second time apart from sin for salvation. Our hope lies in Jesus Christ and in him alone. Amen. There is no hope apart from Christ. We may ask, or you may ask, preacher, how can you be so confident in this? Today's text helps us to see that when life throws us a curveball, 
when we feel like it's just hopeless, when we find ourselves in a desperate situation, we can desperately reach up to Jesus. We can desperately reach up to Jesus. That's where this woman was. She was in a desperate situation. For 12 long years, she had been suffering from an issue of blood. According to ceremonial law, because of her issue, anyone who touched her or anything that she touched would be considered unclean. Leviticus 15, if we read that, we find that, that if she even became cleansed, of this issue. She had to wait seven days and be cleansed for seven days. Not touching anything, not touching anyone. And on the eighth day, she could go to the priest and offer up with two turtle doves and with one, he would offer a, a, a sin offering. With the other, he would offer a burnt offering. As long as an Israelite in this day was unclean, they were to have no contact with other Israelites. What this means, one writer stated that this woman's problem extended even beyond the reach of medical skills. For she had spent all that she had and all the remedies and all the suggestions that physicians had offered her, all they did was made her worse. So here now for 12 long years, this certain woman was labeled unclean. She had no contact with anyone, no hugs, no kisses, no handshakes, no one to embrace her. And she was growing worse. Time wasn't on her side. She was not only growing weaker and sicker, but she had become desperate. But when she heard Jesus was nearby, Despite the ceremonial law, she pressed her way behind him and she touched his garment. Matthew 9 and 20 says that she touched the hem of his garment. Luke 8 and 44 says she touched the border of his garment. What we know is desperately she reached up and she touched him. Charles Allen stated when you're in a situation... When you say a situation or a person is hopeless, you're slamming the door in the face of God. Because nothing's hopeless as long as God is on his throne. No one is hopeless as long as Jesus is still Lord and Savior. He tells us in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Now, I don't know who it may be today, but someone here may be desperate. You may be desperate for peace in your life. Well, I want to encourage you, reach up to Jesus. Because he said in John 14 and 27, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. So let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. If you're needing peace today, reach up to Jesus. Somebody here may be, you may be desperate for hope. Well, I want to encourage you to reach up to Jesus because in 1 Peter 1 and 3, he says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. Someone, someone here today might be, you just may be desperate for joy. Well, let me encourage you to reach up to Jesus. For in Acts 2 and 28, he says, You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of joy in you your presence. Oh, I want you to know that when we get into his presence, there'll be nothing to molest the joy that we'll have with him. Amen. Someone here today may be desperate for love. 
In John 15 and 9, Jesus says, As the Father loved me, I also have loved you. Abide in my love. Whatever it is that you're desperate for, if you'll reach up to Jesus, God, the God of hope, will fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of his Holy Spirit. Well, I don't know what you need or what you're in desperate of, but I do know what you need. You need Jesus. You need to reach up to Jesus. Folks, I'm convinced. I'm convinced that in your desperate circumstance, if you'll reach up and call upon Jesus, you'll receive a divine, you'll receive divine results. What do I mean? Well, once this certain woman touched Jesus' garments, immediately, the Bible says, immediately, the fountain of blood <laughs> was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed from the affliction. Can you imagine that? Twelve years, he said, it'll never stop. You've given all your money away, and it's done nothing but make you worse. But touching the hem of his garment changed everything. Not, <laughs> not down the road. It didn't change everything the next week. It didn't change everything the next hour. It changed it immediately. I want to let you know something. If you give your life to Jesus, he changes your eternity immediately. He doesn't wait the next week. He doesn't wait to the end of the day. He doesn't wait the next year to see how well you've done. He will change your destiny immediately if you'll give your life to him. Immediately, her fountain of blood was dried up. Once the woman touched Jesus, he knew something happened to him. The Bible says he knew within himself that power had gone out from him. You know, this has confused a lot of us for a long time. Because Jesus turns around in this crowd and, and everybody's pushing on him. Everybody's bumping him. Everybody is, is trying to get their hands on him. But this woman touches the hem of his garment. And he knows that power has left him. <laughs> he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? Healing power had been released from Jesus. Now, we have to understand, when we, whenever Jesus healed anyone, it was done at his will. It wasn't done automatic. It wasn't like, it wasn't like uh, walking up to Jesus, touching him, and you're, you're healed. No, that ain't the way it was. It was intentional. It was at his will. Everything he does is intentional. You know, I got a problem I better not say that. But listen, folks, we need to understand this. God's a God of order. And there are those who will criticize us, not because, just because we got Baptists on the, uh, on the uh, sign out here, but because we have a program that we look at. Some of us look at it, some of us don't. What we understand, what people outside don't always understand, is that we don't always follow the program because we allow the Holy Spirit to do whatever he's going to do. And we will, we'll follow him as he leads us. The program is just to keep some sort of order. There are those who don't want me in their pulpits because I care carry notes. You know why I carry notes? To keep me in order, to keep from chasing rabbits for 30, 45 minutes and sharing only 10 minutes of a message. I want you to understand this. God is a God of order. Everything he does is intentional and strategic. And for anyone to think otherwise hasn't looked around. They haven't looked around at this creation. And saw, they haven't been in a biology class. They haven't been in a science class. They haven't been in a history class to understand that everything done has been done in order. Strategically planned by God. <laughs> None of that's in these notes. <laughs> Whenever he healed anyone, 
It was at his will. His power wasn't just automatically released to anyone who touched him. So we must ask the question, why was she healed? If he was being bumped all along the way, I imagine one of the disciples may even had him by his, by his cloak and, and pulling him through. Why was she the only one healed in this moment? <laughs> Verse 28 tells it. You're right. For she said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made well. <laughs> this woman's faith was so that she had no doubt that if she just touched his clothes, that she'd be healed. But again, the question has to be asked, how did Jesus know? How did Jesus know that this power had been released from him? <sighs> what we don't always understand is the cost of our healing. What we don't often think about is the cost of us being made whole. How does Jesus know? Because it appears that whenever he healed someone, it came at a great cost to him. You know, often what Jesus would do after a great healing, he would retreat. And he would go off to himself to be refreshed. And he'd be refreshed by spending time with his heavenly father. You know, truth is, sin has to be dealt with. No one gets away with sin. It's got to be dealt with. And sin comes at a great cost. Why would we need healing? Because of sin. Not it may not necessarily be your sin, but it's because of sin. Centered in and into the world, a perfect world, a world where there wouldn't be no deficiency, it's a world where there'd be no, no sickness, a world where there'd be no death. But when sin entered in, it all came with it. So healing comes at a great cost. How many, I don't know, many of you, if not all of you, you've saw the movie The Green Mile, haven't you? This movie takes place, for those of you who haven't seen it, it takes place in the Depression era of Louisiana. Tom Hanks, he portrays a prison guard by the name of Paul Edgecombe, who is responsible for overseeing death row. This death row is called the Green Mile. It's called the Green Mile because that's the color of the floor between the cells of the prisoners and the electric chair. The prison received a new prisoner by the name of John Coffey, played by Michael Clark Duncan. Coffey had been convicted and sentenced to death. And while awaiting death row, it was discovered by the guards that John had this gift of healing. Coffey heals Paul of a terrible infection that was really uh, affecting him and causing him a lot of pain. And then when the prisoners, uh, when the guards see this, they take him out of the prison to Paul's home so that he can heal Paul's wife who has a terminal disease. Each time coffee healed someone, each uh, Coffee had to pay a terrible price for it. And he, he would become sick or, or he would have to take that disease or that sickness upon himself, leaving him extremely fatigued, leaving him sick and near death until he was able to release that sickness or that disease. <laughs> Though the guards realized that Coffee was innocent of the brutal crimes that he was convicted of, he pleads with them to let him die. The gift he had cost him so much, he didn't feel he could continue carrying the weight of it. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Your sin, my sin, it cost Jesus everything. He didn't just die on a cross. He suffered for you and I. It come at a great cost. 
for us to be able to call upon the name of the Lord. To know that he will hear us and that he will save us. Here are the disciples. They were unaware of the cost. For Jesus to leave the portals of glory to come to this sin-cursed world. For the Bible tells us that in the year of King Uzziah, Uzziah, Isaiah saw the Lord high and lifted up. He saw him sitting on a throne. The, the train of his robe filled the temple. Seraphims were on top of the throne and they cried out to one another, Holy, holy, holy. The whole earth is filled with his glory. And Jesus left that. He left that scene to come to earth to bear our griefs and carry our sorrows. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was placed upon him. But thanks be to God that by his stripes we can be healed. I know what you're saying. No, no, preacher, you're wrong. The Bible says you will be healed or you shall be healed. <laughs> I know what the Bible says. But in order to receive the healing, the eternal healing that Jesus came to earth to provide for us, we must exercise faith in the Lord Jesus Christ by believing that he is the son of God. He lived a sinless life. He died for our sins and God raised him from the dead. I, you know what? I, I've said this over and over and I've been mistaken. I, I, I've been wrong in saying it that Jesus in his own power raised himself up from the grave. The Bible says that God raised him. He didn't rise up. He was raised up from the dead. If you believe this and you confess Jesus as your Lord and Savior, then you will receive the healing that cost him his life on an old rugged cross. The healing that, that came with it, him being carried to a whipping post. The healing that came with it, his beard being plucked out of his face. The healing that came with him being spat upon, being mocked, and being cursed. The healing, this eternal healing is what he offers to you and I. He carried his cross up Galgotha's hill. He was nailed to the cross, suspended between heaven and earth. And on that cross, he suffered and sacrificed himself for your sin and my sin. On that cross, he was the once and for all sacrifice for the sin of the world. He did this so you and I can be forgiven. And we can stand before him and hear him say, Well done, thy good and faithful servant. You've been faithful over a few things. I'll make you rulers over many. Enter into the joy of the Lord. Jesus, it cost him so much for you and I to be able to hear him say, well done. Someone here today believes the gospel. You believe everything the Bible has to say about Jesus. As a matter of fact, many of you here today who are unsaved, you believe that if you would call upon the name of the Lord, that he would forgive you of your sin. You believe that he will write your name in the Lamb's book of life and heaven will become your home. Amen. There's many in here today who is apart from God who believes this very truth. You believe that if you would desperately reach up to him, that you will experience his divine results in your life. That you'll receive his peace. You'll have his hope. A hope that goes beyond this world. That your joy will be full and you'll love like you never had before because you've never known this kind of love. Someone here today believes the gospel. <sighs> I 
Jesus asked in here, who touched me? Folks, you can rest assured Jesus knows who touched you. If you reach up to him, you can rest assured he knows. Why do you think he asked this question if he knew? He wanted to give this woman an opportunity to confess. And when she did, Jesus said, daughter, (laughs) your faith has made you whole. Go in peace. Be healed of your affliction. As every head's bowed, every eye's closed. You who are here today and you know that you don't have a relationship with Jesus, but you know that if you call out to him, he'll respond. Why won't you respond? He wants to do you nothing but good. He has no ill will to you. He wants to bring healing in your life. He loves you so much that he died for you. He suffered for you. He sacrificed for you. Someone here may have received Jesus as Lord and Savior but you're far from him. You're not walking with him. You've decided to turn and walk your own path. And what you found is your path has no peace. It has no hope. It has no joy. It might have pleasure for a season, but it has no joy. It has not the love that you are longing for. Would you today? Would you today draw nigh to him? For he says he would draw nigh to you. This church is praying right now. Brother Ronald's beginning this song of invitation. As they do, is there one that will say, Preacher, I need Jesus. I believe who he is. I believe what he'll do. I believe what he's done. And I believe if I call on him, he'll save me. I'm ready to call on him. Are you today? Are you ready to call on him? Right where you're at, would you call on him? Would you call on him and just say, Jesus, I believe and desperately right now I need you. Forgive me of my sin. Wash me white as snow. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving me of my sin. Help me now to serve you. Give me the boldness to tell others that I belong to you and you belong to me. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, do you believe if you've called out to him, if you've asked him to save you, just come and tell me. If you've asked him to forgive you, just come tell me. While Brother Ronald is singing, come tell me. And let's celebrate. Come tell me that he belongs to you. Is there one? Through the good times and the bad, the times I felt that you were all I had. You were my friend, and you believed in me. Oh, he believed enough in you that he went to a cross. You went the extra.
as they throw the nails in you when you could have walked away turn your back to all my sins but for me you gave your life you chose to be my friends all the like a child so full of you you stood by my side and held me near you were my friend and you believed in me When my faith grew weak and strength seemed low, you took me by the hand, Lord, you led me on. You were my friend, and you believed in me. Stand with them, would you? went the extra mile. Just to prove your love was true You held out your hands As they drove the nails in you When you could have walked away And turned your back to all my sins peace that we're desperate for for the hope that we're desperate for for the joy and the love that we are desperate for only Jesus can feel it but he'd give us so much more than that he'll protect us he'll guide us and lead us he'll help us a long life's journey. I'm so glad I can call him my friend. When I need him, he's there. Some of you really need him right now. And he's just waiting for you to give him opportunity to be right there with you. But like Jesus, I'll be a gentleman. <laughs> he won't force himself on no one. But I just want you to know you haven't gone so far that he won't come to you. Your children can get so far in this world that you won't go to them. You'll open a door and you'll say, I'm here for you. And they can come back at any time. 
But Jesus will go to where you're at. He'll do what no one else will do. My prayer is that before it's too late, you'll call upon the name of Jesus. He loves you today. He loves you today. Thank you, everyone, for being here with us today. We know this holiday season is right here. At Thanksgiving this weekend, Christmas around the corner, New Year's following. Be careful. Ladies, I've noticed something in the last couple weeks. It gets dark early. It may get dark before some of you get home from work. Some of you are going to be out shopping Friday. Be careful coming home. Be aware of your surroundings. If someone's not there in the home when you get to it, call someone, talk to them before you go in the door. There's no need of you trying to be brave when you can have help. Call someone, just talk to them till you get through the house and you know that you're safe. And if you can't find anyone, call me. If I can, I'll pick up. If I can, I'll pick up. And I'll talk with you as you go through your home. This is serious. We're living in desperate days. And there are a lot of people around this time, even though this is when we're the most generous in all the year. During November and December, people are more generous than any other time of the year. They're trying to make sure they've given all they can for tax purposes. (laughs) And some people, God's just got a hold of their heart. (laughs) So we, even though that's, the truth that's the circumstances we're in there's still people out there trying to harm us so be careful be aware of your surroundings it's imperative it's imperative Again, thank you. I I pray that you have a blessed and wonderful Thanksgiving. We look forward to seeing you next Sunday. We won't have Bible study this Wednesday. Next week, afterwards, Brother Kip will continue in chapter 3. He didn't get very far. Uh, I think maybe the first seven verses. So you you can come and join right on in with us right after Thanksgiving. But... uh, Before you leave today, turn, shake a hand, tell someone you love them, hear them tell you they love you. As you go, go loving the gospel, living the gospel, and sharing the gospel.